Welcome to Simpler Bible, a daily journey to biblical understanding. Romans 10 today. What are we going to do? You already know. We're going to go back to the end of Romans 9. What shall we say then that Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained it? That is a righteousness that is by faith. But Israel, who pursued a law that would lead to righteousness, did not succeed in reaching that law. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith, but as it were, based on their works. They have stumbled over the stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. Whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. Who's the them? It's the Jews. So look at this. Um, if, if you, if you'll read the first part of chapter nine, the first part of chapter 10 and the first part of chapter 11, it gives you a really clear kind of statement. And then the rest are parenthetical descriptions. So, so listen to the, listen to the beginning of Romans nine. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. I could wish that I myself were accursed, cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. They are the Israelites to them belong the adoption of the glory the covenant, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. And then chapter 10, brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they would be saved. Do you see the the symmetry? Like I'm telling you, if you can just go read the first few lines of chapter 9, 10, and 11 in order, the picture just unfolds. And then the rest of chapter 9, the rest of chapter 10, and the rest of chapter 11 is an explanation of those opening statements that he makes. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer for them, 10-1, is that they would be saved. That they, again, being the Jews. For I bear them witness, they have a zeal for God. Zeal, great word for passion. They have a zeal for God, but not according to to knowledge, being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. All right. So that we can see how it's tied together. Go back to the end of chapter nine. And and so it says they pursued a law that would lead to righteousness, but they didn't succeed in reaching that. Why? Because they did it based off of works and not by faith. They have a zeal for God. They tried to establish their own righteousness through works. It didn't work for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. And so that should make us think of what we already saw in Romans 7. You have died to the law so that you could be joined to Christ. And the Jews are still holding fast to the law. They're like, no, man, they're not going to let it go. They're like, we're going to find righteousness through the law if it kills us. And it will because they can't find righteousness through the law. And Paul's going, man, I want them to be saved. I want them to come to the truth of Jesus. For Moses writes about the righteousness that's based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. And so he says in Leviticus 18, it's also recorded for us in uh, Ezekiel 20, Ezekiel uh, 20, 11 through 13, Ezekiel 20, 21, Nehemiah 9, that whoever does the works of the law will be declared righteous through it. But the righteousness that's based on faith says, don't say in your heart who ascends into heaven. That's to bring Christ down. He's going to quote here Deuteronomy 30. Um, And don't say who will descend into the abyss. That's to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does the law say? The word is near you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. This is the word of faith that we proclaim. So he's quoting Deuteronomy 30. He's like, this is the word of faith we're talking about. This is the message of faith that we're talking about. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But what are the Jews doing? What does it say? They're seeking their own righteousness through the works of the law. I want to encourage you to memorize Romans 10, 4. If you can't hold some of these other pieces that we've talked about, these last previous nine chapters in your head, I want to encourage you to memorize Romans 10, 4. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for everyone who believes. Meaning, Christ is the end of the law as any standard of righteousness for whoever believes. The law is no longer a standard for righteousness. How do I know? Christ is the end of that. How do I know? Because I, those who are under the law have been made to die to the law so that they can be joined to Christ. Remember, you can't have two husbands. You can't be married to the law and Christ. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for all who believe. So go back to verse 9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Not based on works, but based on faith. For with the heart one believes and is justified. With the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. That's Isaiah 28, 16. For there is no distinction between Jews 
and Greeks. So no distinction. So we saw that in Romans uh, 2.11. We saw that in Romans 3.22. This lets you know right here, there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, that he's still talking about the same thing he started in chapter 1. There is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. I, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for all who believe, for the Jew first and then for the Gentile. For those who do wickedness and deny God, there is death and judgment for the Jew first and also for the Gentile. For those who believe in God, there is righteousness for the Jew first and also for the Gentile. Um, the, the righteousness is, is for the circumcised and the uncircumcised. Abraham was the father of the uncircumcised and the circumcised, the Jew and the Gentile, the Gentile and the Jew, over and over and over again. Who's he talking about in this book? Please do not lose sight of who Paul is talking about. He's doing a comparative look at, at uh, the Jew and the Gentile. They're both sinners. They can both come to faith through, through Christ. It's not through the works of the law, which is what the Jews are trying to do. It's not through the works of the law. It's through faith in Christ. There is no distinction. This is uh, 10, 12. There is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him, Jew or Gentile. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's Joel 2, 32. How then will they call on... In, oh man, this is so important. Listen, listen. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? Go back to verse 1. Who is he wanting to believe? The Jews still. How will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? Now, I want, I want you to pay attention to this. This is key because this verse gets taught and it's taught in different preaching conferences or mission conferences as an appeal to the hearer. Hey, go and preach the gospel. How can they hear without a preacher? That is not what's being said here. Listen, okay? All right, I, I think that these questions in chapter in verse 14, I think the, Paul is anticipating the questions of his readers. He does that a lot. He does it in 1 Corinthians several times, as we'll see. I think Paul has just said, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And I think Paul is anticipating that his readers are going, how can they call on the one whom they haven't believed? How can they believe if they've never heard? How can they hear if there's not a preacher? And I'll show you why. And they say, how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Isaiah 52, Nahum 1. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed the report he heard from us. All right. Isaiah 53, 1, that's the quote there, is a reference to the Jews. Because Isaiah 52, 15, which is the verse right before that, and Isaiah 53, 1, it says this. Isaiah 52, 15, speaking of the Gentiles, say, Those who have never heard will believe. Those who have never seen will understand. And then the immediate thing that he does after that, talking about the Jews is, but who believed our report? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? So they have not all obeyed. The Jews have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. We make that the Bible. I've told you that means the message of Christ, the words of Christ, the teaching of Christ. And then what does Paul say? But I ask you, have they not heard? Indeed they have. So this is where it's key. But I ask. So in verse 14, Paul's not going to say, how can they hear? How can they hear? They haven't heard. And then say, but they have all heard. I think Paul's anticipating the question of his readers and his readers are going, how can, how can they call on the one in whom they haven't believed? How can they believe in the one they've never heard? And the, the reader, he's anticipating the question. The reader is saying, how can they believe in someone whom they've never heard? And then Paul says, have they not heard? Indeed, they have. He's answering their question. He tells them they have heard. So anytime that somebody gets up and reads verse 14 and tells you they haven't heard, there's people out there and they haven't heard. And the only way they can hear is if we go. Paul says, have they not heard? Indeed, they have. Read a little further and you'll see what Paul says. Indeed, they have. Their voice has gone out into all the earth and their words to the end of the world. He's quoting Psalm 19, 1 through 4. He's referencing back. So all of creation is declaring the glory of God is what Re uh, Revelation, sorry, what Psalm 19 is, is talking about. But also he's going back to Romans chapter 1 where he says God's divine power and eternal attributes have been made known so that no one has an excuse, right? He's already said back in chapter 1 that God has revealed himself to everyone, his divine attributes, through everything that's created. And then here in chapter 10, he says they have heard because all of creation has revealed the glory of God. And he quotes Psalm 19, which says that. So he says, I ask, have they not heard? Indeed, they have. 
So it can't be that they haven't heard and that they have heard, right? Paul says they've all heard. So he's anticipating the question, how can they believe in the one they've never heard? How can they hear without a preacher? Paul goes, are you sure they haven't heard? They have heard. And he says this, the voice of creation has gone out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. But I ask, did Israel not understand? So there's another, this is Paul's question again. But I ask, did Israel not understand? First, Moses says, I will make you jealous by those uh, of those who are not a nation with a foolish nation, I will make you angry. That's Deuteronomy 32. Then Isaiah is so bold as to say, I have been found by those who do not seek me. I have shown to the, myself to those who did not ask. That's Isaiah 65. But of Israel, he says, all day long, I've held out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. So he says, has Israel not heard? No, they've heard. To them came the law, to them came the promises, to them came the covenants. All of creation has declared it. He references back to Romans chapter 1, where he has made himself known, his eternal power, his divine nature. And he says, did Israel not understand? And then he gives two verses, Deuteronomy 32 and Isaiah 65, about the Gentiles believing. I will make you, Israel, jealous by those who are not a nation. I will make you jealous by a foolish people. Okay, the Gentiles. And then quotes Isaiah. I have shown myself to those who have not asked for me, the Gentiles. How do we know that's of the Gentiles? You'll see more of that here in just a second in chapter 11, but also verse 21. But of Israel, God says, all day long, I've held out my hands to disobedient and contrary people. So chapter 9, I, I would be accursed if it meant that Israel would believe. I wish that Israel would believe. They won't believe. They won't put their faith in Christ. Chapter 10, they have a passion for God, but not according to the knowledge. They're, they keep trying to pursue their own righteousness, not the righteousness that comes by faith. And then the rest of chapter 10 is that the Gentiles will believe. And, and people are going to say, well, yeah, but how can Israel believe in the one they haven't heard? And he goes, they've heard. And then he quotes Psalm 19, and he parallels that. It references back to Romans 1, where he says God has already made himself known to Israel. And so they have heard, but they didn't understand. And that was according to Scripture. It was meant that Israel wouldn't understand why, so that they would crucify the Lord of glory. And so pick up with me again tomorrow, chapter 11, and we'll finish this section of Romans where he is talking about his desire for the Jews to come to know the Lord. And I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for journeying with us today at Simpler Bible through another section of scripture where we come to know and understand God a little bit better. Look, if you're brand new to Simpler Bible, we have all sorts of resources available for you. Go to our website, simplerbible.com, and there you can find these videos, you can find our podcast, you can find links to our social media, and you can even find a blog post with additional scriptures if you want to go into a little bit more study than we had time to cover in this podcast and video today. We hope that this tool will be exactly that for you, a tool. Not something that replaces your daily walk with God, but something that enhances your daily walk with God and helps you to know and enjoy Him more. Thank you so much for being part of this, and we'll see you again tomorrow.